We definitely need to work on your gambling problem, though. Woo! Yeah, we're back into it. Episode number 39 of the podcast. <laughs> it's going to be a baseball intro for every episode now. Yeah, we've got, to, we've got to hit this hard because we have two things here. We didn't do an episode yesterday, so surprise, this one is twice as long. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> you, didn't tell the, you didn't tell us that. I told you, oh, I told I? you, bro. I, I told you, everything is on his schedule. <laughs> I would I would say some filthy things to you, Jude, if I wasn't fasting. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can break your fast on this one. That's okay. I can. Uh, we'll take it all. <laughs> we'll take it all. It's good for content. It's good for content. This is you know, you you sacrifice the hasanat, but you get the extra views. So you know, it's dunya <laughs> over akhira for you, my friend. Anyway, so how is? You have to have a good clickbait title. Ahmed breaks his fast. On podcast, Biftar Ajud breaks his fast live. <laughs> you could say literally Biftar Ajud. Put it on there. <laughs> Clickbait. How did he do that? I wonder. <laughs> yeah, y'all goofy. Link in bio. Y'all, y'all goofy. <laughs> <sighs> I was. Uh, this is the. I, I thought of this topic while I was watching TikTok today about the three worst casinos in uh, Las Vegas. In Las Vegas. And bro, first of all, let me get through this. This is not very Ramadan esque, but like the three worst are the clown uh, circus circus. You know that clown one? Yeah. There's a, I don't. I, yeah. I don't know it. And, but all right, go on. Yeah. That, honestly, so yeah, there's the circus circus. Apparently, the rooms are eight dollars a night. Apparently, the the last time they cleaned it was when it opened. Battle construction. No okay. Way. It's dirt, bro. It's dirty, well, dirty. You're paying eight dollars a night, bro. Okay, but see, I mean, for the eight dollars, you like, expecting a clean yeah, room? Oh, pff, yeah, God forbid, man. Honestly, like, so it's filthy. Uh, apparently, the people who like it's just a lot of degenerates. Like, and we're talking eight dollars a night. What do you expect? Well, no, you're talking. You're talking Las Vegas degeneracy, you know. So if yeah. you're, you know, if you're in Las Vegas, people and you're that like, definitely oh, hit, like below rock bottom are staying. Oh there. yeah, there's, there's they're in the rock, trenches, rock bro. That's you know, you're eight dollars a night's cheaper than rent. Like that is. Oh, I, yeah. it's I would uh, I was thinking about that. What if you just stayed in the hotel forever? You know, you I'm can sure have the stay there. Three, yeah. you can have a three dollars and a three dollars a day buffet. You can have that buffet for three dollars. Load up one three dollars. The, the buffet is like three dollars or four dollars or something like that. Now I feel like we should. I feel like you need to go and try their food. I'm not gonna. I will never eat that food. Couldn't pay me enough to eat that food. Disgusting. Buffet food as well. Three dollars, bro. What like? How much food are they gonna have for three dollars? Like, what are they buying? Like, <sighs> apparently, like, no. So you, you try to get them a lot of carbs and a lot of frozen meat is what mainly three dollar oh, buffets are. I've is. seen this before. Hasn't it been in movies? Sorry, hasn't this casino been in movies? Yeah, it has. It, it it used to have a heyday and then it just sucked. Okay. Oh, is that why? All right. There's okay, also one. There's another one called the Ricks, the Ricks, the Rinse, the Rise, the Ritz? the Re- or the Rio. It's definitely not the, the Rio. Ritz, bro. It's the Rio. It's the Rio I Hotel. It's the I Rio. think it's the Rio. Is, the Rio's is... no, no, it's, it's dodgy. It's it's pretty. It's empty basically. So they had the outbreak. <laughs> okay, this is not what I'm joking. They had like a what, what is that disease that they had an outbreak for like a few years ago? Not COVID. Ebola. Ebola. Not Ebola. It was something else. It started with a T or a... Hold on. Rio? Is it called the Rio... Is this why they had the shooting? Outbreak. Uh, Legionnaire's disease. Like, they legitimately had Legionnaire's disease outbreak. I don't know what Legionnaire's disease is. Yeah. (laughs) So, it's it's completely abandoned. And the person's like, so if you want to go there and... Have a good time completely alone in this abandoned hotel. Oh, so and there's like also Chernobyl. a lot of feral. Yeah, there's a lot of feral cats there as well. I'm not even joking. Feral cats. And the how third worst of the. I don't know. I don't know. Like, how much could rent be? I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I, a lot of these details I don't have. I just watched a, a, a 30 second TikTok, so I'm basically the semi expert at this point. Mm. And the last worst hotel, apparently. Is the Luxor Hotel? You know the one that looks like a pyramid. What? How's no that way. bad? That, that, that wouldn't be bad. I don't think that one. No, it's terrible. Terrible, apparently. Sucks. Probably for sucks. what you're paying. 
I know it's terrible. You don't pay much. They have indoor balconies, and these indoor balconies have had a lot of people. People are jumping off the balconies and stuff, basically. Okay. Yeah. So there's that. that <laughs> and um, imagine having an indoor balcony. I'd be pretty mad if I had a balcony that didn't look outside. You're like room with a view. I... All you see is the lobby. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's the view you have. The, guy, the, the sad people checking in. And then the person who was in the video, they were saying, yeah, and also the very culturally insensitive decor of the place. And then it oh, hit me. Because the this pharaohs are angry. Well, is it's, it's like uh, this whole appropriation thing really frustrates me because I never found it offensive that people used to wear like the pharaoh outfits or the dish dashes in Halloween and stuff like that. I never found that bad. I don't care. It never really bothered yeah. me. I mean, the, the, the pharaoh outfit doesn't represent any living culture today. I'm not saying the pharaoh outfit. I'm so, I'm saying... <laughs> the dish dashes. Let's, He's let's talking say someone cultural goes, appropriation in general. Yeah, yeah, let's just say someone wears a sheikh outfit or, you know, whatever. It's not a sheikh outfit. It's a, a, like the, the Palestinian yeah. thobe and uh, agal and rotra and all that stuff. Do you find that offensive if someone wears that at Halloween? No. Not if they wear it, like, not ah. if they wear it semi-properly. Semi problem. I'm not telling you to wear it properly, but I'm saying if you're wearing a dishdasha and then like you have like a vest on, so to speak, a certain what type of vest. Yeah. Oh, that's, okay. That's, that's so point. I, yeah. so I see what you mean. So as long as it's it's not going to very bad stereotypes that are negative. One hundred percent. Okay. Well, see, that's the thing, because there's a lot of people on TikTok because I I followed that rabbit hole down on TikTok even more. Of TikTok, here we go. Now I went down the TikTok rabbit hole. And people are getting, there's a lot of people who are genuinely offended. Like, this is genuinely, you know, they want to cancel people for wearing certain outfits. It's very much like uh, the president, you know, that president of uh, Prime Minister of Justin Trudeau when he did blackface. Yeah, but that's a little Yeah, more that was though. pretty bad. That was bad. It's, yeah, but it came, it's came up from. Now, the, the Arab equivalent of blackface is what? Wearing a, a thobe and dishdashe? No, the Arab no I don't think well. so. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's what better described, I think. It's the best. Uh, it's okay. Nice, 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 you know. Uh, nice. Okay. Okay. So that's so that's the that's the equivalent there. Okay. So that there, I, I, I understand. That actually crosses a line then. That's, you know, a bit. Because it's not even a true stereotype. It's but like, the even... problem is it, what, like, when, they, when, they do, when they did used to do it back in the day, like, especially like blackface, they wouldn't just like, it wouldn't just be like the face. Like they would wear like, like massive lipstick around their lips to make like big lips you know what i mean like it was like they'll take all like bad stereotypes about a culture and add it onto it yeah and i feel like i feel they were starting to use some certain words as well you know you know you know certain words maybe would have been did. used maybe they, maybe they did oh i i don't know i guarantee you when it was an all-white party and there wasn't a single there, black guy there that word was being dropped that, there, was, there was a couple of bombs being dropped <laughs> I thought it, it has to be i don't know man yeah but speaking uh, of bombs i think that the arab stereotype <laughs> yeah is, is <laughs> good segue actually well done is um it, like better's point yeah that's, that's where it gets offensive like for me, it's it's that or the hijab. Like you just don't don't make a mockery of hijab or niqab or that. Like like there's no need to get to go there. I mean, do you they, find they, won't, they don't do it? They don't do it in like uh, oh, I'm actually dressed as part of the culture. You know what I mean? It's a, it's like a for example when when fans were here for the World Cup, like a lot of people like for example in Western media would be like oh like they're culturally culturally like appropriating by wearing like the gutra agal whatever. And all that, but like everyone here was like, nah, it's great. Like it's no, even, if, even awesome. if it's not the colors, even if it's yeah. not the, the like the right colors or whatever, and it was like the colors of the flags and stuff like people were like super happy about it. No one no one found that offensive at all. Nobody felt I guarantee that it was you enough. there were certain like like oh, Caucasian people some, specifically some people would be like offensive. Oh yeah. my god, like how could they like and like there's like bro, nobody like we don't care. Why would you care? But, like, we don't but care. the thing is you go in a desert safari in the Middle East, what do they give you? They give you a ghatra straight away. Yeah, but it's awesome. I, yeah. I feel it's Which cool, is, though. It's, it's, part of part wearing, the, it's part of the experience like, of the yeah. being in the desert. Well, in all fairness, like, back in the day, they used to wear it, like, like it had, it's like a multi-purpose. Like, they used to wear it when if there's a sandstorm, they cover cover their, like, mouth and nose and just have their eyes showing so, like, it doesn't affect them. Um, it's like, it's a utility item as well. It's not just for looks. 
it keeps a sweat on your head so you cool down quicker. That's the point. Exactly. So it's like a utility item. I get it. It's part of like the like the desert culture. And if you're gonna go like camel riding or like desert safari and stuff like that, they'll give it to you, and like you'll see white dudes in like a thobe, like just to like you know feel the culture. Yeah, but, but also but, like if you're gonna go like into like some snowy cold area, you're gonna wear what you know maybe what those people that live there wear because they probably know best. Yeah, exactly. So like but, wearing a qatra in a Gelabi in a desert is probably the best outfit to wear. Exactly. So do you, but so so can or is it like each grace can decide whether something's offensive or not, or how does this work? Well, I mean, you first know? of all, we don't need we don't need anybody but us deciding what's offensive to us. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, so I think that's what he means. I think like a, that specific grace gets to decide what's yeah. Because yeah, I I don't know the rule of this because you know when we were younger there would always be in Halloween. There would always be people dressing up as like Native Americans, for example, with the feather hats and stuff. And people found yeah. that very, very much so offensive. I think it's got more to do with the history of that, like, like because it's not a good what history. They did to the native, what they did to the Native Americans, then they made a mockery of them, right? Like, you know, yeah, dressing with well, a igal, generally, it's not like like we've we've had. I think Arabs have had a pretty good history generally. And then it's only like within recent times where like we were being demonized. But um, yeah, like it's yeah, not like that's we why a lot of like American teams like change their names here. and stuff like that. Yeah. What do you mean? Who like, you can't call, like, it's not the Cleveland Indians anymore. It's not like the Washington, it's like the Washington commanders now. It's not like the Washington Redskins. Oh, wow. That was a racist thing. The Redskins. I just thought yeah, it was the Redskins uh, was pretty racist. Yeah. Or like Cleveland Indians. Like they changed it to Cleveland. I don't know what they're called now, but Cavaliers. That's that's poor branding, right there. You don't even know what they're called. But it's recently that it's recently that they changed it. Like in the last year or sec, two years only. So it's been there for a while. Well, apparently, the All Blacks were getting. Uh, they were saying they should change their names because it's racist. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. Racist to who though? Like well, apparently, it's racist. Apparently, it is. It's not a. It's not the right thing to say. It's very insensitive. But see, I feel we need to draw a line at some point and just say this is where we're going to be offended until everything past this point, fair game. No, no, that's that's how well, how, how is that how is that even possible? Yeah. Well, we need to have a council of the line being drawn and just say, well, this is what we find offensive. This Who's is a, on, this, is on this council. Jude Hamid, obviously. Obviously, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> I would with, be the decider. With, with you, Jude, who, who would be? It's just Jude's council. council, by the way. There's no. You need to have you need him. you need to have a good mix of people. You know, you have the good people. Ah, so you want diversity? Yeah, all right. We're, we're gonna diversity. That's a key word. That's a key word. We want synergistic diversity. So you're gonna have like 200 people on this council, one from each, like more than 200, probably yeah, like a thousand people representing every ethnic group on the yeah. planet. No, no, no. You don't yeah. need to represent every like. So we take Why the not? eight billion. Why do some people not get represented? I'm I'm gonna try to explain this to you. There's eight billion people, right? We divide, yeah. and there's 20 seats. And eight billion divided by how seats. much of each reads, and I'm one of the seats. So 19 other people get chosen. And we're deciding who are the so, other nineteen. So are you the Palestinian right? person, or are you so, the Arab so you, person? So, you, or are you so you're saying person? like, so you're saying like China and India will take ten seats. Yes. And then the rest of the world will have ten seats amongst themselves. So America will take well, nine, no. and well, then no. one will well, be no. the rest of the world. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying China and India will take ten seats. I will take one seat. I will represent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dude, you're the head of the council. Dude's the head of the council. <laughs> I would be Jewish for the people who are unspoken for. <laughs> There's a lot of unspoken people. You know, the problem is if you're from like Papua New Guinea or something like that, you're never going to get a seat on this council. No chance. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things. Oh, that if, if this podcast does make it somewhere one day, <laughs> it's gonna go down real fast when they go back in the logs. Listen, the, the day the day I get famous enough, I'm gonna come out and just cancel myself. I'm like, this, I have said this year. I'm sorry for this. Just get ahead of the bus already. <laughs> just mark them down all in like a notebook. Just be like, yeah. hey, listen, when I get big, I need to go through all these and, and just get no, out of it. Bro. I don't get know ahead of it. That. That's the thing. So everyone needs to come together. We decide what is offensive, what is not offensive, and then everything. But it just doesn't seem. No, but the, I think the, the issue is with what people find offensive today is everyone's applying it through like an American lens. It's like Cancel everyone culture. wants to, yeah, everyone wants to find the equivalent of blackface for every other culture, essentially. Because, yeah, but, it's, but it's, like, it's, not everyone's gone through what black people in America has gone have gone through. Exactly. Yeah, that's a fact. Like and that's that's the issue. Like 
they, they associate every minority group with what black people have gone through and nobody's gone through what they've gone through. <laughs> so it's like, we're not as sensitive to. Well, I think there's some, some groups have gone through, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, there's a lot of groups that have gone through. I think every group of people has gone through some level of tragedy in you know, sure, their history. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. But, but like, we're not as sen- like, like when when blackface used to happen back in the day, it, it, it the point was to be disrespectful. Like, yeah, see, I, I think that's that, that's that's the main point there. It's where is it coming from? Is this coming from a place of I want to embrace your culture? I want to, you know, as even if it's a bit of fun, you wear the rotary and agal. It's obviously a bit of fun when they wear it, right? Yeah. yeah. But I want to embrace your culture. I want to take it. Or is it? Ha ha ha! Look at these, look at these yeah, Arabs. It's, but it's only a, it's only the people of that certain culture that get to decide. You don't get to decide this for other uh, cultures what they should find offensive. So would you feel if it's appropriate that on say TikTok, for example, they put on their community guidelines what is appropriate and what is not appropriate for each race? Then it, it's very difficult the list to decide. Will be infinite, bro. Exactly, because you're gonna start then, you're just, like, then no like, one's gonna post anything. Yeah, but you're going to start like making smaller and smaller and smaller. Like, oh, I represent the horsehead people of uh, Zelthra 13. Here we go. Yeah, Let's exactly. Go. And then like, oh, okay, oh. this person's offended. All right, we can't have this stuff now. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's you know, it, it, even if you start like categorizing people, you can't even categorize them. You can't even categorize Arabs successfully because there's too many groups. Yeah, you can't. So I don't know. I think uh, I think maybe uh, it's it's a two case thing. I think people need to be a bit careful of how they're acting. Oh my god, my nose is so itchy. Get on my nose. Anyway, uh, people need to be a bit careful on how they Ramadan. act and think. Yeah, exactly. Especially in Ramadan. Stuff for Allah, brother. And people need to grow a bit thicker skin and not be, you know, just losing their mind for every because people are sitting there on social media now looking for uh like a flaw, you know what yeah, I'm saying? People, people are looking to be offended. Like there's a yeah. lot of people out there that just want to be. They've got nothing else to do but be offended. Have we lost so you, that? Yeah, I think better had actually something because he lifted his ear cup there we for go. one second. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you good. clarified which yeah. cup he lifted. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and that that's ends chapter thirteen of uh, the Chronicles of Badr. You were gone. We had to <laughs> we had to discuss something. Yeah, everyone's yeah. just looking for a reason to be offended. You're right. You're, yeah, people have become uh, soft, think, bro. But it's not everyone, they're... to be honest. It's it's just not a, a everyone, vocal, but a it's vocal it's like... few on the internet. Yeah, see, there's. I, I was actually thinking of this. This is exactly the case. There is some few people who are extremely vocal, who somehow just appear on everyone's feeds because people click on those videos to get mad about seeing people who are easily offended yeah. and because people are clicking, they become more and more clicked because you know the algorithms favor this. Yeah. So it's it's a, it's a vicious cycle of of uh, offense. Yeah, you're right. I, I think so. The loudest people or the the most vocal minority seems like they represent the opinion of such a large demographic of people. When it's not so much the case, it's more like ten, twenty, you know, curly haired, uh, permed out uh, high school kids who are just thinking, you know, <laughs> this is what they want. Essentially, yeah. I don't and. Know. I mean, you look at like, if I look at just like my work environment, for example, like across the hundreds of people, there's maybe three or four people that I would point out that are be like, you know, sen- sensitive individuals. You can't say specific things in front of. True. Because they'll be, they'll be offended and they'll make a big fuss about it. But most people don't care. Like they'll, they'll take a joke. They'll, uh, oh, they'll yes. Some like out of like, you know, inappropriate jokes here and there and laugh about it. But like. I think I think it's very region dependent. Yeah, like, yeah, I think it is especially like in North America, I've, like it's becoming a lot more popular for people to be like very sensitive and very PC outraged. And, yeah, exactly. I, I honestly think that workplaces within the next probably twenty years are just going to outlaw every sort of like banter and joke you can make. <laughs> Man. Honestly, uh, it, it, they'll be they're gonna have a zero joking policy, and it makes uh, it makes zero sense because zero policy, hundred percent. Because can you imagine you're an employer, and then Ahmed's like, "Hey, Jude, how's your morning been?" And I'll just sit there and be like, 
what do you mean by how's my morning been? I'll go straight to HR. Like, yo, when Ahmed said that, he actually tapped my desk. And I don't know what, you know, what his intentions were with me and being on the desk. But uh, <laughs> he's a disgusting pig. I don't want to deal with him anymore. <laughs> You know, so oh, that's you, when you know it's near the, near the end of times, bro. Yeah, we're basically there. Like, we're, we're basically there. You hear that guy? Who's who's that guy who goes on those podcasts who just tries to get uh, who just goes to like companies to sue them? Ah, oh, the uh, is the, the guy that's a professional snitch. Professional snitch, bro. <laughs> what's, just, what's oh, what's his name? Um, Charleston White. Charleston White, bro. He's first of all a genius. He's actually a genius. Yeah. And he, he says, he says, he says, I there. aspire to be like him. He, he, Charleston he White was it. talking about like a rapper, like NBA Young Boy. And then he's like, oh, NBA Young Boy. And then he farted like in the video. He's like, see, even talking about that motherfucker gave me gas. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you hear what he, how he's, he said, I used to go wait in the, in the break room. And it's way for people to have a conversation. He's like, it's only a matter of time before someone talks about, oh, I did this with this girl, and that's how it went. And they will go straight to HR and report it, record the incident, and then I'll go back. Only a matter of, you know, they'll die down, and then three weeks later, new incident happens, boom. It goes again. So, yes, but, but, you know, imagine people catch on to this, and companies are becoming so... You know, as a company, your your optics are becoming like so important. You know, for every cause, every company now has to be at the social uh, the social part. It's like the fabric of society. For they don't want to be liable part. for people's acts. Yeah, they don't want to be liable. 